So I'm going to talk about love, parenting, ego, and self-inquiry. And I think that's a, it's a great question because one of the, you know, Hawkin said like one of the greatest loves, you know, how, how sort of love emerged uh, evolutionary wise, uh, you could say, was the love of the mother for the child. And of course the father loves the child enormously and uh, with the bonding of that, but, um, and you could say that people in in severe ego have absolutely they don't really care about the the um the children at all and so that's like the like the dinosaurs they lay an egg and just run away and they don't even bother to look back so it's definitely mammalian love has definitely gone a long way but what's the difference between lo being a person loving another person in as if i'm a person and they're a person, I, I need to love them and take care of them because without me, they won't be able to survive. And the more I can look after them and tell them how they should behave, uh, the more prosperous they'll become. I mean, how does that relate? Well, the difference is, I mean, parents generally do love their children conditionally, but get very upset when they violate their belief systems and try and control them to... Um, do what they think is in their best interests, um, you know, the parents' best interests, like you, sh you should uh, clean your room, you should study hard, uh, don't spend so much time doing this other, uh, this other stuff is not, not good for you. And thinking about this kind of stuff and then telling their children, well, and how does that relate to self-inquiry? And, and also I'll, I'll relate it to, um, uh, are related to the uh, Hawkins levels of consciousness, which is that in an environment where you where um, so the uh, so who's going to I mean it's really the case of um, how connected are you to the infinite in the in the presence of children and um, and then that when you're when one is in the head then a lot of fear and a lot of thinking goes on and one is very cut off from the infinite, uh, from that infinite supply. And so basically it's the head trying to, and, and the fears of the parent that are really trying to uh, worry about the child and tell them how they should behave and what they should do to survive. And actually when that gets extreme, that becomes, you know, it actually becomes very very negative for the parent and the child uh so that the child uh, rebels enormously and the parent gets very very upset and it's actually a very low vibration and so it creates it's actually the the connection to the infinite which is the source of love and light both for what seems to be the parent and the child so it's actually in letting go also, if something miraculous happens when you let go, is that you're transcending both your thoughts and you're helping to, tr and also just imagine, like if you if you could have your child sit in front of, say, uh, an enlightened teacher like Ramana Maharishi, that infinite light and presence or Jesus Christ or Buddha, if that was your parent and they were in the infinite all the time, the miraculous would tend, you know, the the child's belief systems and neuroses in that infinite light and presence would start to dissolve miraculously, uh, either through the words coming through uh, the infinite, uh, as with Ramana, Jesus, uh, Buddha, uh, which would answer any problems the child would have, rather than the parent's thinker answering the things, and the child would actually prosper. Uh, infinitely faster and more prosperously without the ego being in the way of trying to run the situation with the child from fear and control and thinking and you know it's like uh we know with like 12 step groups you know addicts who go to 12 step groups just tend to get well in that vibration of, of unconditional love keep coming back no matter how bad you are but that's a 12-step group. But what if you had Jesus as your as your father, or Buddha, or Ramana, or Krishna as your father? 
Well, you see, you wouldn't be looking after them. It's like the absence of ego, the infinite. The infinite might say something to them in one word, and it might totally transform their lives. And it wasn't you that was doing that, you see. Um, the lives of the saints, Mother Teresa, just by being in that infiniteness of unconditional love beyond thought, um, she was sainted because someone came in with cancer and um, and then after the, being in the presence of Mother Teresa, the cancer disappeared. And, the, and of course, it was obvious to the Catholic Church, she's a saint, you know, when miraculous healings. So is it good to be telling your parents, sorry, is it good to be a parent telling your child what they should do for their health and uh, for their wealth and for their well-being? Or would it be better for you to be in the infinite uh, without being in the ego? Would that be better for their health, their wealth, their direction, rather than being a channel for the infinite? What words would come out would answer the child's questions, and that just that infinite light is healing, and would start to wash away their neuroses. So, in the so, what is the highest good? Well, I would say the highest good. Um, it depends on where you are at, what level, of, how far developed you are. But generally speaking, the more you can go into the infinite, the more you and your child uh, will accelerate your, your spiritual journeys. And, uh, and you know, uh, if I am sure my spiritual growth would accelerate enormously if Buddha was in my house or Buddha happened to be my father and I could just be in that presence all the time. Um, I didn't really, you know, a father that's, if I had a father that was in their head all the time telling me how to behave, I think that, that I mean, it comes from how far they, their spirit, my father would be spiritually connected. And those would be the words that would come out. So actually... We know from Wilkins' research that the more you're in, in you're connected to that infinite presence, um, you know, the miracle it is the source of all miracles. It is the source of all healing, um, and just to be in those presence, limiting ideas in the the minds of others who believe they're really their heads starts to dissolve. So then the question asks, you know, I'd say to any parent that's struggling with their children is um, if you really, really love them, would you be willing to let go to the, um, of your own stuff and let, let the infinite in you uh, or the infinite as you without you being in the head be the thing? Uh, and that, I would say, is the biggest blessing for your children, however old they may be. And it's also the biggest blessing for the world. And the big, biggest blessing for yourself is not to be in the ego to the best uh, to the best ability. So how do you how would you apply that from a self inquiry? We could talk about cancelling beliefs. We could talk about the course of miracles. We could talk about trust. But what does that mean on self inquiry? Well, quite simply, um, uh, whenever you're with your children, it's to put self inquiry before your head in the presence of your children. So let's say that um, uh, if I had a son that came up and said, look. I don't like you, Dad, and I've got all these problems going on. Uh, and then, you know, maybe some, I'd want to tell them, well, that's your fault. You've got all your problems, and I'm trying to help you by giving you all this advice. But rather than say that, I'd rather inquire. I mean, who, who wants to tell my child what they should be doing? Well, me. Well, what's the me? Well, my, my thinking wants to tell my child what to do. What's observing the thinking? Well, what's witnessing the thinking? Well, uh, okay, well, there is... There isn't anything observing the thinking. And they stay in that. And um, and then eventually what will happen, keep doing that. And um, of course, I mean, the sun may find it a bit bizarre at first, but eventually you'll be washing away the ego in the presence of the sun because the sun is bringing up triggers, like you want to say this, you want to do that. You want to relate from your thinker. You want to relate from your ego mind. You want to relate from your your past associations of your son and what and also your idea of what you should be as a father. But what's observing all of this? What wants to tell your son anything? What's what's behind all of this? Well, there's nothing there. So as you just let that infinite presence keep coming in, and you know, um, it, you what will be happening is be washing your thinker out, and then eventually you'll get to much higher connection to that infinite silence and stillness 
and just trust that that will answer. Um, and okay, so there is a process, and your son may think you, your dad's a bit weird for a while. He's not saying too much, and seems to be a bit blank. Maybe dad's got Alzheimer's, <laughs> Alzheimer's or something. But um, but uh, eventually, what will happen is you'll jump up. You'll be transcending your karma, your beliefs, limiting ideas, and eventually, once you get to those more infinite realms, um, the miraculous will start to happen with your son. It's worth it, just going up, and um, that will bring enormous healing. And uh, if your son tells you something that's disturbing, and you're disturbed, then just say, "Who's disturbed?" and just go into that, and you'll find. I think what you'll find. Uh, tending to happen is that miracles will happen both for you and your son because um, uh, the family karma will be brought to the light and in that light uh, all kinds of miracles like I, sh I just share a story with my mother my mother once came to me I was very disturbed and said to me um, uh, she had heart failure and the doctor said look there's no medicine we can give for your oedema your swollen feet your, your heart's far too gone there's nothing we can do for you just go home. And I was really up, my ego was really upset. I just did something from the Course of Miracles, which is basically take me to the infinite. Yeah, God did not create uh, Uedim and Mother, so it's not real. I just dissolved the thought that there was such a thing as that in my mother. And and her, her, her legs started to become normal. And she kind of intuitively knew that I was doing something. And she showed me, look, you know, the, the, the water was just draining out of her legs and, and it returned to normal in a few days. So that's just one thing, you know, that the infinite, being in the silence, being without those limiting ideas and those fear-based ideas uh, invites, you know, miracles, the infinite, the infinite to deal with it. Is it better that the infinite, the infinite talk and be with your son? Uh, or is it important to be in the head telling the son how to be and how to survive in this terrible world and how they're going wrong? So... So I'd say to the parent who is struggling, no, I have to be in my head and telling them what to do. And if I don't give them good advice, they're going to, you know, get into a lot of trouble. So I need to, you know, it's like, well, what's going to be the best father? Um, you being in the infinite or you being in the head, trying to, trying to, you know, the intentions might be good, but the, uh, will the infinite do a better job and trusting that? So that's what I'd say in relationship to self inquiry. I know that um, I'll give, a, I'll share some stories. Um, I went to meet um, uh, David Hawkins, um, who is uh, who's enlightened, and just to be in his presence, just to be in his presence. After meeting him, to be in the presence of an enlightened teacher, it's like the amount of miracles that happened nonstop afterwards. Within, uh, within uh, I think, two or three months, I was in a, in a food fellowship and I got my sponsor, now 14 years sober or abstinent around the food addiction. Um, all my health problems with what he told me disappeared within three to five years. I was off the dialysis machine, walking sticks, asthma inhalers. So many miracles just to be exposed for a few seconds or, or a few minutes in the presence of an of someone in that presence. So imagine if you had your parent there all the time, what that, what kind of effect that would have. I mean, I just know a few minutes in the presence of an enlightened teacher is enough to transform the, my life beyond recognition, addictions and heavy illnesses falling away. So, so it's again, that the, how do you do that practically? Well, with, I mean, not just for a parent, but with, with everyone, you know, uh, if you go to the observer, in the in the presence in uh, while you're interacting with people, you'll be dissolving the idea that you know the head has to interact with another person. Just being the observer and then trust if words or or things or whatever comes out of the mouth that will be enough, and it's not you that's speaking those words because there is no you when you're not identifying with thoughts. Okay.